lots of hatred, lots of secrets, lots of romance, the devil or not, the hell or not. I got nightmares in my head, I fear, that the thoughts build up until I can't hear. That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space Get him the necessary treatment and bring him to my basement I told Luca and exited the coffee shop I went inside my SUV and drove back home This is a hell of a awakening I went to my room and took shower I dressed up because in the daylight I'm a respected businessman And by the night the devil is at work I went to the dining room where my food is served and Luca is there too with my schedule for today. He's a most he's my most trusted man. He is six inches tall, has a taut firm body, always wearing a serious look on his face. He used to be a special army officer but dropped out from there and joined hands with me. He is in his thirties and trained like her. He is dressed in a suit, neat and crisp, holding an iPad, going through something. He told me my schedule for today and I listened while having my breakfast. He ended and unnoted. He already had a breakfast. I was eating but got lost somewhere and unknowingly a smile crept on my face, which didn't go unnoticed by Luca. Luca, I told Jungkook his schedule and was waiting for him to finish so we can go ahead to the company. I saw him smile. Well, if you ask me when he smiled like that, then my answer would be in forever. A frown placed on my face. Who got you smiling like that? I asked. What? He answered. Why are you smiling like that? I asked again. Nothing special. He denied my question. The girl in the coffee shop. Should we get her? I mean, she witnessed everything. I spoke. Don't worry, she won't say a word. How do you know? People like her are not brave enough. He spat bitterly. Let's go. He spoke. Chapter 3 Wine, well, it's a nice day. Except the rough start and the Greek god. Gosh, can I just delete his image from my brain? Huh. I thought to myself, sitting on my chair, sipping on my coffee. Well, I walk in this company called Kim's Building as a project manager while I am basically a part of the team. I'm just trying to get my things done and it's frustrating. Then the cherry on top is I witnessed the murder today. He shot the man in front of my eyes. She should get off my head. Shoo! Miss Wyan. The project manager spoke. I flinched and lifted my head up and there he was, towering over me. This man is in his 40s and act like in, he's in 60s. Mr. Dixon, I spoke, perplexed. Y- yes, sir. I spoke, standing up. Thank goodness you came out of your haze, or I thought I would have to stand there yelling just to bring you back to the world. He yelled lowly. Sorry, sir, I didn't mean to. I apologized. I'm on the June group of companies file on my desk in five minutes. He said as if I'm his cockamine, Jack, just as it is already mentioned in his name. Adi, I thought to myself, e- yes, sir, it's ready. We'll be there. I spoke, searching the file, but couldn't find it. I turned my head to him and he gave me a glare. Then I remember, remember I forgot it at home when I was wearing my shoes. Now... This Jack has another reason to shout at me. I straightened up, hanging my head low. Uh, I forgot it at home. I stammered. What? He shouted. Everyone looked up. I felt so embarrassed. Are you out of your mind, Ryan? He shouted again. Do you have any idea we are having a meeting in 30 minutes with the Jones? He again yelled, but this time he triggered the fear built in me when I was a child. My hands started shaking, but I hit them behind my back. You are so responsible, he yelled again. And again. So please don't yell at her. She will get the file. Anna spoke, my best friend. Now great, Mr. Dixon yelled again. I want it before the meeting. He marched to his cabin furiously. I sat on my chair trying to cool the coil of this childhood phobia. Anna gave me a glass of water, which I drank voraciously. I got hold of myself. I rushed to the elevator. I drove myself back to my apartment and entered through the door. And it was resting on my shoe shelf. Like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? You little thing embarrassed me to the... I don't have time for that. Ugh. I got into my car and drove back at high speed. I parked my car and entered the lobby. I hurriedly get to the elevator and a few more people also came and stood by me. But I cared less. I checked my watch and only seven minutes were left. Thank goodness the door opened and I entered along with two more people by me. But I cared less seriously. 
I pushed the 15th floor button and to my surprise the man also was going to the 15th floor. I was tapping my foot on the floor out of anxiety. I was checking my watch again and again. Three minutes left. Mr. Dixon would bury me alive. I spoke to myself. The door opened and I hurried out of the elevator not knowing I dropped my card. My steps came to an halt when I heard my name being called. Miss Swine? The man who was with me in the elevator spoke. Yes. He handed me my card. Oh, thank you so much. I thanked him and rushed to that ugly old man's room. I handed him the file and now I am tired. I was going out until he called me. Miss Wine, Jones are here, so you are going to do the job in the meeting room as you have already gone through it. He spoke. I went numb. But, sir, no buts, no go and fix yourself in the meeting room within five minutes. I went out. That jerk did their own purpose. I went to the bathroom and fixed myself and then went to the meeting room. And to my bad luck, everyone was already there. There was one seat which was unoccupied. I took the seat reluctantly and people saw people's gaze on me. Why are they staring at me like that? I thought, but then shifted my attention to the file. The meeting started. Now it was my turn to explain. I got up from my seat and went there. It was dark and the projector was on. Thank God the projector was on and the room was dark or I might faint of nervousness. To me, they were just dark ghosts. I explained every detail well and then someone turned the lights on. Everyone praised my work and I felt a little relieved. My eyes looked with an unknown pair of eyes, with unknown intentions. I looked down and those plumpy, cassava lips, the sharp jawline. I looked in, this, in his eyes and he was still staring at me. Oh my god, he's intimidating. Mr. June, a voice echoed and he turned his attention to the, towards the voice. Wait, Mr. June, the cold bachelor? I just locked eyes with the most eligible cold bachelor of the state. Wait, I was sitting next to him the whole time? When calm down, it's not a novel. You did great, miss. Mr. Kim praised me. Jung Wine, I spoke. Yes, Miss Wine. That was impressive. He again praised me and I gave him a smile. Thank you, sir. I went out and sat on my chair. Anna came and I hugged her, making a sad bout. What? She asked. Nothing, I'm tired. I lied while I was thinking about Mr. Jun. Coffee? She asked. Yes, please, much need. I spoke looking up while hugging her, but stopped seeing a figure looking at us. Mr. June, he simply looked with his cold face and passed by sending butterflies in my stomach. Whoa, Anna asked again. He's intimidating, I replied. She looked over to Mr. June. I heard he is short-tempered and he's a walking volcano as well. Mm-hmm. I hummed, but he didn't give me any rude vibes. Chapter 4 Jungkook, so many days have passed by, but that girl is still in my head. I recognized her on the left. She didn't even spare me a glance. Then she sat next to me and still didn't pay any heed to me. What does she think of herself? But then she gave the presentation, the way her lips moved and her hands moved, the way she gazed here and there to take a look to, at the people in the room. Later, she made eye contact with me, and now the eye contact is haunting me. Those innocent eyes, the chastity in them, the want in them, the terror in them, the curiosity in them, makes me addicted. Mr. Kim is in the lobby and coming to the conference room. Lucas spoke. I nodded, and when I get the news that Mr. Kim is in the room, meeting room, I went to the meeting room. I went inside and gazed around but couldn't find that particular person in the room. I gritted my teeth and sat on my chair. The meeting was going on but my eyes were becoming bloodshot red. The anger and the need was building up in my veins. Soon the meeting ended. It was great, Mr. Kim said. Thank you. I thanked him. Well, I didn't see a particular person who gave the presentation last time. She worked on details. I added. You must talking about Mr. Wine. Actually, she took leave. Something came up, I guess. He replied and I nodded. Sitting on my chair in my luxurious office, a desk screaming power, the surroundings screaming wealth, the view from a ginormous window from the 25th floor of the city at night. People are leaving. The lights are dazzling because from this high, just like ants on the ground. The quiet surroundings, but my mind is having a conflict. Standing by the window with a glass of scotch in my hand, I called down the liquid and threw the glass on the floor, causing it to shatter on the floor. Since I received the news, my mind has been a mess. Anger has been building up in my veins, causing my veins to pop up. Grating my teeth, I again averted my gaze outside of the window.
Sleep, Monaj. Tomorrow is a big day for you. I spoke and smirked, knowing that the upcoming day will be brutal. To be continued.